DaVinci Resolve 19 recently came out and that means I've made a few small changes to my color grading workflow. This is what I use for my content creation, for my filmmaking, and it looks something like this. So first, let's get it back to lock. Now we're in Canon Log 3. We're gonna switch it to Rec. 709. Then we're gonna add my LUT, Everyday Cinematic. We're gonna add a little bit of exposure changes, some balance, and then we're gonna add the color slice, which is a new part of the workflow. We're gonna add a little bit of curves and then some masking at the end. It's a pretty simple workflow, as you can see. So now I'm gonna take you into the Vince Resolve and show you exactly what it looks like. All right, inside DaVinci Resolve, the first things we're gonna do is set our project settings. Mine is always in 4K, that's what I shoot, and I shoot 30 frames per second because I always use my content for Instagram as well. In color management, we've set it to DaVinci Y RGB, and I just have my timeline color space set to DaVinci White Gamut and Intermediate, and Rex Online Gamut 2.4 because I've calibrated or changed the display settings that I have on my MacBook Pro to show this. So. With that out of the way, let's start building our note tree. It's gonna look very similar to what you've seen me do before, so I'm just gonna create a few notes here. First, we're gonna take it from log to the into one gamut, and we can might as well just add a color space transform to this already. And at the end, we're gonna take it from the into one gamut to rec 709 and add another color space transform here. Then we're gonna have our lot here, our exposure changes here, and our balance changes here. Then which is new is our color slice here, our curves, and then we do our masking, which will be an inside node and adding an outside node. Now you might see that I'm not using a lot of highlights and shadow masking. That really depends on my type of shot. And for this shot, we don't need that. So what we're gonna do is take it first from Canon Cinema Gamut and Canon Log 3 to DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And then for the last node that we have over here, we're taking it from the Vinci White Gamut and the Vinci Intermediate to Rex 9 and Gamma 2.4, simply to work in the largest possible color space when we're working in the Vinci White Gamut Intermediate in here in between. Then I'm gonna add my LUT. I always use my LUT from my color pack. That is the Everyday Cinematic 2. And I intentionally overexposed this shot quite a lot. So we're gonna have to do some exposure changes. Let's just bring this back a little bit. So without the lot, with the lot. So it changes quite a lot, no pun intended, and we can see that it really changes our balance as well. So with our scopes up here, we're gonna head into exposure. Currently using the HDR wheel, I used to use the offset, but you can use whatever. If we're using the HDR wheel, we'll have to go into color space and change this to DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate because that's the color space and gamma that we're working in. And then we can simply just start stopping it down. Now, what my reference here will be, is that I want my skin tones to lie around the 70 mark and they're currently at the 90 mark instead. So this is try by reducing it one stop to start with and that brings it to 80. Let's try with two stops. That's way too much. So maybe one and a half stops will be the trick. And I think that looks pretty good, but I think we might just do 1.25 just to have a little bit more to work with here. And then our background has become very, very dark. That's kind of on purpose with this because I overexposed myself quite a lot. So we can have a very moody, dark background back here, but we could just raise the shadows a little bit if we wanted to bring back some of that background as well. So maybe we'll just add half a stop back in the shadows just to have a little bit more room to work with here. And that's kind of what we're gonna do here. Now for the balance, I'm gonna head back into my offset here. And what I'm looking at when I'm using the balance is the vector scope. So I can see that it is quite warm right now. So I'm just gonna try and take out a little bit of the red here to see if we can balance it a little bit more towards the back here. And I think it looks pretty good. Now it became way too blue here. So maybe pull it back a little bit. And then we're gonna check if our skin tones are lying in the right place. They might be a little bit too magenta, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of coolness here. Also checking that the gray is kind of in the middle, and this looks like it's on the skin tone line now. So I think we are in a pretty good place now. It went from a little bit warmer to a little bit colder, a little bit more magenta, but that's when the color slice comes in. So, so far what we've done is we've taken it from log to rec 709, we've added a lot, we've changed the exposure, and we've adjusted the balance a little bit. So now we had a good starting point. Then we can just tweak the colors a little bit. So with the color slice, I wanna add back some of my saturation in my skin. So I'm just gonna boost my skin saturation and density with the color slice here a little bit. And it was turned off, so that's why we couldn't see anything. So let's just reset it again and add a little bit of saturation, a little bit of density here. 
And this really brings back the skin tones and everything from this a little bit more cool look to something that's a lot warmer and looks a lot better. Now, secondly, I have the blues in my hat up here. I kind of want that back as well. So I'm just gonna see if the cyan, the cyan captures it perfectly. Shift H and clicking on this, we can see exactly what it selects. To see if we can just bring back a little bit of saturation and density into my hat here so it doesn't look as bland and faded. Something like this, that already looks pretty good as well. And I think this is a pretty good look for this talking head already. The only other thing I wanna do is now I wanna add back my curves. Let's just turn on these notes again. And I'm still gonna use my curves trick here because I do think that I have a little bit too much red in my skin. I don't like the nuance in the red here. So I'm gonna single out my skin tones, which is lying on the skin tone line in between the red and the yellow, but a little bit more towards the red, which is exactly what I've said here, towards the red, towards the yellow and then I'm gonna make another note here and I'm just gonna try to adjust my skin tones a little bit. What I'm trying to do is to get them on the skin tone line and I kind of like my skin tones a little bit more on the orange side but not too red. You can see we're trying to balance out and we might just need to add a little bit more red here just to get rid of the red up here in the skin. You can see now my skin tones were a bit more red and now they're a bit more yellow. Maybe they are a bit too yellow. So turning that down a little bit. And that is the way I'm gonna do it. It's not the most flattering shot that we have of me here. So maybe we can find a better hero frame. This might be a little bit better. And then I think my lips are just a little bit too magenta. So I'm gonna make a point over here and I'm just gonna push it down towards the red a little bit just to get those skin tones to be a little bit more red, not skin tones, those lips to be a little bit more red here. And let's just see if we can do a little bit of a better job, maybe pulling down this ever so slightly as well. And I think we're pretty good here. This looks pretty good already. Now we can just add our inside note, which will be a circular mask in this case, something like this over here and just feathering it out here. I wanna bring a little bit more contrast to my face here. And I might just after that, want to lift up the camera just by one. Something like this, just bring a little bit more contrast, a little bit more brightness, lowering the shadows a little bit more, getting a little bit more of a contrasted, saturated look. And then for the outside note, normally I would go and darken it a little bit, and we can do that here as well. But I might just want the highlights to be as they were, something like this. And now we have a pretty dark, moody shot but we have a little bit more attention towards me talking and I think overall it looks pretty damn good. So that's essentially the workflow. Bringing it into Rector 9, working in the Vinci White Gamut, adding my lot, everyday cinematic, adding exposure changes, going and adjusting the balance a little bit, then adding color slides to boost the skin tones and any other color that I want, really singling that out, it makes it so easy. Then adjusting the curves to get the exact color that I want, and then adjusting the inside and outside mask from here, just to bring a little bit more attention to me in this case and making everything look a little bit better. If I'm doing one change here, it might be to just raise the shadows a tiny bit more. So maybe to 70.75 here instead, just to bring a little bit more of that shadow back. But otherwise, I think this looks pretty damn good. So we still have the skin tones lying around 70. The gray is looking gray as it's supposed to. And we have a very nice kind of moody contrasted scene but I really like how that looks. So that's essentially the workflow update. And if you wanna see me use this on other videos, this is probably what I'm gonna show you in all the videos moving forward. So with that, it was just a quick update on my workflow on how I grade, and I hope that made sense for you. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And other than that, I'll just catch you in the next video. Take care.